I also ordered a book from America called Recording the Beatles, a 500 page bible that describes everything into a single detail. The way they record it, what microphones they used, where they place them, what effects and in what extent they used, how they compressors, limiters, equalizers, echoes worked, how they spaced out instruments into individual tracks. With almost every song comes a breakdown of how the recording was done. This book helped me a lot and 90% came from there. All I had to do now was to get some old microphones. I bought a vintage Philips microphone, a copy of AKG D19C, which the Beatles used mostly for the drums and piano. It's very cheap today and was back then as well. One of my friends lent me an AKGD 30 microphone. The Beatles used an AKGD 20, but it's almost the same. They used it for recording of bass drum and bass guitar. The drums were recorded by my fellow performer Maciej Dziewicz from Big Band Metro Club. We put together a drum setup that was the close to Ringo's. On the piece of paper I noted the setup of the drums and the individual microphones for all the songs according uh, to the recording the Beatles book. I didn't want to miss out any details. The other thing to do was to choose a studio where the recording would take place. This wasn't difficult as I used to work at Czech Budweiss radio station which had similar features as the one in Abbey Road. A large room with high ceilings and with a staircase leading up to the control room. Out of the 15 songs, drums were recorded in 12 of them. The drum and microphone setup had to be changed five times based on the Beatles era the given song belonged to. I have to thank Roman Kamba who works in the studio for letting me set everything up exactly as I want it. The recording started with songs from the early Beatles era and continued with the later ones. Uh, that was the best way. Mathieu was recording with my demo bass that I prepared. We surrounded the drums with a three-sided drum booth covered the hole on the bass drum, which is nowadays used because of the microphone, but wasn't used back then. Mathieu was complaining that due to the covered hole and with no blanket inside, it was difficult to play. When we put the blanket in, he was very happy. Fakt ne? Až prostě, až od seržanta Pepra dali deku. Seržanta <laughs> Pepra. <laughs> Kudá je jiný, to se to rád tak na píču. We started recording four songs using the first setup consisting of two basics microphones. The AKG D30 on the bass drum placed on its upper right corner and the 19C as an overhead microphone from above towards the snare. A third room microphone was also used, placed about 3 meters away from the drums, where it stayed for all the songs. This setup was in the style of the 1962-63 Beatles era. Using the second setup, we recorded two songs in the style of the 1964-65 Beatles era. The only change was that the AKG 30 was moved to the center in front of the bass drum. The first setup was based on the Revolver album. For the other microphones I had to find an alternative as I didn't have so many old microphones. The Neumann KMS-105 microphone was added under the snare and D19C overhead microphone was redirected. Three 
songs were recorded using a fourth setup based on the Serge Pepper album. The bass drum was stuffed with the blanket and more microphones were added to the hi-hat tom and floor tom. The fifth setup was based on the Abbey Road album. The bass drum's front skin was removed, while a second tom was added as well as another microphone underneath it. Uh, there was a microphone added to the floor tom from below and one on the hi-hat from above. We placed tea towels over all the toms and snares. And some beats on the snare and toms were overdubbed. To, to necháme to první, co si nahrál, a jenom, jenom, uh, jestli by si mohl zdvojit tam, kde je úderná verbal atomy. Cože? Co? Cože? Fakt, No, a to, to nevím, jak to bude na tak to tam nedám, ale. No, má ho ostrý, že trefit, kámo. To je pravda. The last setup was based on the Let It Be album. The tea towels were taken off the toms, the one on the snare stayed and only three microphones were used. A condenser microphone as an overhead, a second one from above and D19C from above the floor tom. There was almost no hassle with the microphones. I set everything up as I learned from the book and it worked very good. It was great fun, but I had to keep alert. Running up and down, I was setting everything up, making it sound right, checking the sound coming out of the control room, making a video and taking photos. Roman Kamba was quite shocked when he saw it. He said, what? You want to put a microphone on the floor tom from below? And don't you want to put another microphone from above over the snare? And I said, no, I want it exactly like this. And he said, okay, do it as you want. Once the song was recorded, the guy said, let's do another one. And I said, no, no, now we have to change the setup. And I was already running downstairs, then upstairs to listen to the sound of it and then back down to adjust whatever needed doing. 
Mathieu was in, in a good mood and his laugh was wonderful. <laughs> Dneska máme jako omáčičku s knedlíkom. Tady chlastáme. Odku. It usually took Matěj two or three attempts uh, to record one song. Everything was recorded within five hours, including the setting up of the drums, sound setup, 30 minute lunch break and the packing up. The setup was changed five times and the sound was perfect. That's great, isn't it? Yeah.